Good afternoon, everyone. As you are joining us in our webinar today, um, in the chat, if you wouldn't mind just sharing your school name and the levels that you serve so we can get an idea of who is joining us today. And we're going to be starting in about one minute. Thank you. All right, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today. We have a lot of people signing in. Um, I'm excited that today will probably be our most heavily attended webinar that we've had so far. Um, so hello, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Amelia Pfeiffer. I'm the new executive director of the Pennsylvania School Counselors Association. I just started on July 1st and um, as I came in, we decided to start adding um, some professional development for school counselors across Pennsylvania. And what we did was we, um, based on our re-entry guide, which I will show you in a minute, we came up with a series of webinars that are available to you um, to watch on your own. Obviously you're watching live right now, but there, um, all of these webinars are recorded and they are available to be viewed on our website. So before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that um, this one is the fourth in our series of six re-entry webinars. So the two more that we have coming up, the next one will be on October 14th and that will be re-entry to school through a rural lens. So if you work in a rural school district, you might wanna tune in for that one. And then the last one in this series will be on October 28th, re-entry through an urban lens. So if you are interested in registering for either of these upcoming webinars, um, you can go to our webpage. It is paschoolcounselor.org slash re-entry. And then, um, as I mentioned, I wanted to show you what our re-entry guide looks like, and this is what our webinars are based on. Um, this was developed in association with the Association of School Psychologists of Pennsylvania, and um, it's just a companion guide. It lists a bunch of resources to help you as school counselors in uh, re-entry back to school, whether that's face-to-face -face in a hybrid or a virtual setting. Um, so again, if you go to our website to paschoolcounselor.org slash re-entry, you will be able to access this companion guide. So um, what I'd like to do now is I would like to introduce our speaker for today. Um, her name is Kathy Spake. She is a former governing board member of PSCA, so I'm really excited to have her today. Um, she now is a retired school counselor, so she is an independent career development consultant, and um, her and her team work on the standards and work on the K-12 guidance plan. So she is going to talk about all of the updates to the K-12 guidance plan today. Um, I just want to let you know, though, um, 
She will not be touching on the career readiness skills. We um, had those in our webinar yesterday. We had Dr. Pamela Emery talk about those. Um, so that webinar from yesterday, it has been recorded and will be uh, posted on our website very shortly on the, um, the website I mentioned earlier. And then um, also any information about the career artifacts will be coming up as well um, on our next counselor symposium, which will be on Tuesday, October 6th. So all of those topics related to career standards, they will all be touched upon in different webinars, but I wanted to just delineate that for all of you so that you could keep straight all of the different um, areas around the CEW standards and the K-12 guidance plan that we are all mandated to have. Okay, I hope that clears up some confusion, uh, but certainly if you have any questions as we go through, just type them into the Q&A or into the chat and we will address those as we go through the webinar. So at this point, I would like to introduce Kathy Spake and she will be our speaker for today. Kathy, I wanna turn it over to you. Now I'm unmuted. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Amelia. I, I want to start out by thanking PSCA and, and thanking you as their leader now for this invite. Um, I just feel, um, you know, we as a team put a lot of time into, um, you know, develop, working on the K through 12 guidance plan with counselors all across the state. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to explain a little history of that right now uh, for you. So let me just get my PowerPoint up here. I'm good to go. And uh, I need to go back a slide because it's advanced one. There we go. So, so anyhow, the K through 12 guidance plan and program. Uh, let me give you a little history. You know, the title for today's uh, presentation was career development. And I put in my bio something about attending the rollout of the ASCA model in Pennsylvania back in 2006, 14 years ago. And um, I remember a man in the audience that stood up and talked about, started talking about career development, and it was Mike Thompson. And that was my first contact with Mike. And I think, you know, all of us, you know, with the passing of Mike this spring, uh, you know, have, you know, thought about his contributions to the plan and how he helped develop it across the state. And he and Betty Holmbo, and Betty's online today. so. She, uh, you know, I've continued to work with Betty and, uh, you know, try to like put together something for you that would be meaningful to review the plan, show you where it is today. And of course, as it says in the first slide, a lot of this comes straight from the work that, that Mike um, did for the past 10 years. Uh, when I went to that, at, that conference at Duquesne, it was really interesting because I didn't know much about the ASCA model then. Uh, and I, I sat there thinking I was with a co-counselor and I thought, oh my gosh, this is exactly what we're doing. This really pulls it all together for me. And then about four years later at a gov governing board uh, meeting, which Amelia referred to, um, you know, Mike, Mike was there and actually presented on, on some work that he was going to be doing on this plan. And so that started the history of, uh, you know, me personally getting to know him better and, you know, working with him. And I've met some of you, I saw the chat of everybody that's joined in. And so, I, you know, I just want to start out by dedicating this presentation to Mike. I want to also mention some of the people that are now working um, as a team together. Uh, and they are Alice Justice. She's actually here in the room with me today, helping with some of the tech things, um, which she's really good at. She's a retired counselor as well, and a, now a career development consultant. And also Betty is on today um, as a participant. And of course, Betty and Mike spearheaded all this work throughout Pennsylvania. And I know that many of you um, did some fairly detailed work with them. So thank you for joining us today. I'm really excited about this. Um, I just feel like it's something that we've been putting together to do for all students. And that'll move me on to the next slide. So the value and purpose of the K through 12 guidance plan, we're gonna go into the history a little bit, but I think the main thing is that all students are prepared to make informed career decisions as they transition 
from uh, from high school. And um, Kathy, can I interrupt for a second? I'm sorry, but we can't see your screen. Can you okay. share it with us? Oh, sure. That would be great. <laughs> Thank you. Something happened here. Yeah, I don't know. Hang on a minute. That's okay. And thank you, Alice, for jumping in to be our technical support as well. In my tie-dyed shirt. <laughs> so did you do this down here? You, did you ever do that part? Okay, now let's try this. Is it up? Is it up, folks? No. I'm gonna let Alice sit down. Hmm. I might have worn something different, but it is what it is. Microsoft. There we go. All right, good job. There we go. Thank you. So the value and purpose of the K through 12 guidance plan is, is that students, all students um, are served in terms of making informed career decisions as they transition you know, from high school. And it, it starts you know, with kindergarten programs and career development in, with very, very young children and then uh, all kinds of developmentally appropriate activities as they transition into the high school and then eventually transition into the workforce or a post-secondary institution. So today's presentation, as you can see on the slide, is a snapshot of the plan, as well as the resources for development and, and implementation. And I know as an audience that many of you are at all different levels with this plan. I just wanna acknowledge that right now. As I moved across the state in the last three or four years um, and met with teams from Western PA to Philadelphia, and I also worked with students at Bloomsburg University that were in the training program, you know, it was very obviously to me that everybody was at a little different place marker in terms of the development of the plan. Some highly developed, um, some at beginning stages, transition in teams, uh, all kinds of changes in districts and leadership. And so it was the one anchor I think that we all had in order to be able to focus on what we wanted our school counseling program to provide. And so as we move forward, you know, there's a, there's a reference in this slide to the COVID-19. And of course, that is what everyone is really focused on now because so many things have changed since last March in terms of our delivery and how. But the one thing that we can all look together at is the plan and how, how the plan needs to be adjusted based on the COVID uh, accommodations now and also like what we're doing for all students because they're they're hitting us in many different ways now some of them virtually some of them in person some of them um, in cyber programs just all kinds of different things so let's continue and talk about that a little bit so the first slide is is one that was part of many of the presentations that um, occurred throughout the state in the training uh, you know, during the training in the past 10 years. And you see on the left, you know, the Jim story and the Joe story. And, you know, Jim on the left who had a college degree, but wasn't able to translate it into a, uh, into a career where he could make enough money to, on the right slide, pay off his college debt. And Joe, a four-year paid apprentice who uh, got some technical skills and didn't have the debt, um, okay on student debt because, and looking at his salary, how much he, he, um, how much he makes annually. And so, you know, many of you saw um, the Kevin Fleming videos, success in the new economy and all the things that helped us to focus on how do we better prepare our students for the workforce and for post-secondary meaningful experiences. And that was our mission as school counselors. And so we got thinking in this last decade, like if I go back to 2010 and we're gonna do a history slide 
in a, in a minute or two, but I got back, you know, we got to thinking and that's how, you know, we came up with this slide, which really outlines the history. So let me move forward here with the overview and then we'll go into the history. If you just look at this uh, briefly, you can see we've broken it down into a number of parts, the background and history, and particularly the career education and work standards, plan requirements, something that everybody's asking about, plan basics, the new format, which was rolled out just two years ago. So many of you have not had a chance to really work through your old plan in the new format resources, um, a section on the advisory council, uh, a wrap up about sustainability, how do you keep your program going, and then some information that's going to be rolled out at the integrated learning conference, which is in November. Moving forward, let's look at the history and laws and initiatives. If you look that, you know, there's slightly different colors here, the federal laws and initiatives are in black. The Pennsylvania laws and initials are in purple italics. And so if you look at this, you can see the section 339, that's the, the name most associated with the plan because it is a Pennsylvania school code that was in 1989 and then renewed in 2006 with some updates. The Pennsylvania career education and work standards rolled out in 2006. Um, the Pennsylvania counselor rubric, which was 214. And then the new plan format, which I said was two years ago, and then moving forward, so much of this incorporated with the Future Ready Index and the, and the Career Ready Standards. It's all sort of starting to tie together now, I think, which you know makes it really meaningful. The other thing I wanna say is it doesn't matter what stage of your career you're at um, when you're working on the plan because I was very fortunate to have the experience to work with beginning counselors in, in the trainings and, and also at Bloomsburg. I was, I was very fortunate to see people that had been in the field uh, more than 30 years working and almost revitalized by being able to write a plan and work with colleagues maybe that had been trained a bit differently than they were. Uh, I think ASCA and our School Counselors Association did a lot to bring us all together because the, the ASCA national model and now the, you know, the fourth update really, really, you know, meshes with everything that the plan tries to do, the teamwork, the collaboration, uh, guidance teams, you know, getting together, working together at different levels. Uh, being able to be counselor leaders, all the things that, you know, we were trained to do when we were trained in ASCA, like really come to the forefront with the plan. So I think this slide is just helpful for everybody to see no matter what stage you're at in your career, uh, because you'll see like where you fit in and the expertise that you can provide because of your knowledge of maybe one of the particular things. The counselor evaluation, and I know the school counselors you know, association was heavily involved in the development of that because I was on the governing board back then. And that really gave us like something to, you know, kind of like hold on to, to say, this is what we're supposed to be doing. And that was what everybody was looking for. So everything that's happened here with laws initiatives have, has been a driving force behind, you know, forming the plan. Moving on, one of the big questions that always comes up, one of the questions that, you know, we get emailed about a lot are, you know, what are required, that the plan is a required document, it must be board approved. I think one of the most invigorating things I've watched in, and I've observed several board sessions in different local districts here, because I'm on several advisory boards, where the counselors attended a board meeting and presented this required document. And people on the school board and administration were listening and hearing what counselors were doing. It was very, it's very uplifting. It must be submitted and filed with the local career technical center and everybody has their unique connections and associations with their supporting CTCs. It should be reviewed and updated on a regular basis. And what I saw across the state was that so many counselor teams were getting together and having regular meetings. They were asking for time during their in services. They were getting an hour, maybe two hours, maybe a whole day to be able to meet with their team, look at what they're doing and align it K through 12. 
and it must be re revised, readopted, and refiled with the CTC every five years. That's one of the big questions we get. And it is a required document now for submission to the Future Ready Comprehensive Planning Portal. And everybody's talking about that. It's gotten more attention. And then we just added for the last bullet here, continued activity because updates and revisions and particularly in the virtual environment now with the COVID-19 accommodations that are having to be made is just so important for counselor teams. So as you meet virtually, many, that's how many of you are doing via Zoom and whatever, it's good discussion time, it's good to look at it. And we're gonna get into some details about that in the next few slides. Let's take a look at the overall, and this is like the reorganized um, K through 12 guidance plan template. And you look that it, again, very closely aligned with ASCA, counselor related duties, delivery system, stakeholder engagement, and then the pathway uh, portion of it. So if you look under counselor re related, that's like some of the easiest uh, parts of the plan to write. And you can, you know, I'm not going to read through all that because this is a reference document, but the counselor related ones during COVID-19 are very, um, pretty much have stayed the same locations, ratios, counselor roles, and job descriptions. When you get over to delivery system, that's where we really have to start to look, particularly in program calendars and program delivery concepts five and six, we have to really start to really look at like, how do we deliver it in this new environment? And our scope and sequence could change a little bit. Um, some things that we typically did in the spring because of the way things work when all the students were physically in school could possibly be bumped to the fall. Um, you know, get creative, be able to look at things and, uh, figure out where that might be better delivered. Um, another thing we talked about is just the job shadowing and the um, concept seven, eight, and nine, the academic career plan and portfolio process. Now that things are done virtually with in many cases, there's a whole, there's a whole scope uh, and sequence of things that can be done perhaps in a different order, order and maybe opens up some doors for things that we weren't able to do before. So that's how we're viewing it as a, like a, let's try to make a positive out of it. I think that's the counselor training in us. Like, let's try to figure out what we can do better, what we can do differently, because we are having to deliver our, our services in a different way now. Of course, the stakeholder engagement, the third column is very important. And, and then the pathway in the fourth column, concepts 12 and 13. And, Throughout the whole trainings um, for the K through 12 plan, I just want to, you know, say in conclusion with this slide is like connecting with the career technical centers and really knowing what they're doing and what what potential, um, you know, programs and you know connecting our students was the that was the huge focus of the training in the K through 12 plans. Um, career technical education has has really come to the forefront as uh, such a good way for us to connect students with the real world. And I think everybody can think of some students that you've worked with that went on to some pretty outstanding um, post-secondary options, which involve career technical centers. Um, you know, some of you have attended conferences. I know I've attended a few and, you know, you see those students up there on stage talking about their career technical programs and where it took them. And I, it, it's just very uplifting. And I think the more we try to connect those students with those programs, um, you know, the better, it's just better for everyone. Uh, this is also a very detailed slide, and I think this is really one that's going to be very helpful for you to have as you sit down and look at your plans. You know, I'm assuming that if you're tuned into this webinar today, you're looking at your original plan, which you probably wrote anywhere from 2011 or 12 on, and some of you that wrote plans as recently as last year. And then the original format, which is on your left, and it's all in the white um, columns on the far left, and then the new plan. And you can see, I, I like the way um, 
you know, we've we've had some assistance with this, um, the colored in sections, looking at changes that are in. And you can see the role of the school counselor, for example, um, asking for evidence of role at all three levels. That was number five, it's now number two. So concept, original plan, and then new plan. This is a fairly complex slide. And I know as a team, this is the one that you're gonna to wanna to sit down with and look at your plan and try to decide, you know, where are you at all these different stages? Where, where do you need to make changes? Where do you need to adapt? Where do you need to adjust? Like for job description, example, when this, when the plan, you know, was first outlined in, you know, early in, you know, 2010 to 2015, we were just getting the counselor evaluation in 2014. And so we took the job description and used the counselor evaluation to show the evidence to show that you were doing what was expected of you. So those kind of things, I think, are very you know, living, working documents that, you know, you work with all the time because you get evaluated every year, you have, um, you know, things that you're expected to do. So this is, this slide, you know, my recommendation on this slide is take a look at it the first time your team is meeting. Many of you have in service days coming up in October um, with the long weekend in October. Some, some have them at another break in, in December, November and December that you might have some in-service time. And this is a slide to sit down. It can be a discussion point. It can be, let's take a look at what we have and where we're at with this. And then, you know, come up with your questions because, you know, we will as a team, um, you know, be able to address some of those for you. So moving forward now, resources for developing and updating your plan. And I'd like to mention Jeanette Carter. I know she's also signed on to this webinar today. She is our project manager. And at this point, um, we are developing a toolkit that will help you with a lot of the documents that were available at many of the trainings that you all attended over the years. Uh, looking at the slide, we're hoping that this will be available by mid-October. And if you send an email uh, request to Jeanette, um, as I said, she is our project manager. She will be able to send you um, multiple resources, um, templates. Uh, I think one of the things that came up today is that many of you will want a blank template for your in-service in the next month to be able to start plugging things in. Jeanette can get that to you. So right there is her email on this slide. And you know, we she can distribute them per your request. So feel free to email her. You know, she is checking her email frequently and will get back to you. Uh, moving on to the um, advisory council and mobilizing stakeholders, uh, how to make your advisory council work for you. We have in like a the, the purple shaded color there, we have the, the statement about the advisory council because as we worked together as a team, you know, it seemed like that advisory council was one of the most important concepts of the plan because it was something new when, when this all started that counselors were not very good at tooting their own horn and letting people know what they were doing and getting their business in community. I know myself as a middle school counselor, that was the last thing I was thinking about was like a presentation for business partners. Well, when we started to train on the plan and I was still an active school counselor, this was one of the things that really came to life for me. And I saw it come to life for many of you out there all over the state. You know, you met those business partners, you invited them into your schools, they got to know your students, they met some of your parents, and you talked to them about what you were doing as a school counselor and how you were reaching all the different you know, students and connecting with parents and connecting with post-secondary. And that's what the advisory council is all about. So we felt it was really critical to include these slides just as a refresher and also as something that, you know, again, I think these two slides, this one and the next one are also something like when you have your K through 12 um, meeting with your counselors and you start working on things or reworking them, whatever stage you're at. Again, I said, that's not really important. It's just the idea that you're meeting together and working together. 
Um, you know, involve your student stakeholders, make your plan goals that are student centered, focus on meaningful experience for students, your parent stakeholders ever so important now, Engage, engagement moves beyond informing, include parents in decision making, sharing career journeys, classrooms experience, classroom experiences, shadowing. And even now, many parents are at home, I'm going to insert the COVID um, you know, thought again that many parents are at home with their child, with their children, They're, and there's a lot of things going on. They're trying to work from home. They, their, their, their student, their child may be online, and I think this is a. I think this time is a, a great opportunity to engage with some of your parents and talk about how it's going and what's, you know, what some of the challenges are. So very first two very critical members of your advisory council. Moving on, um, the other stakeholders, you know, your education stakeholders, and that's all of us that we're working with teachers, we're working with administrators, we're working with uh, all kinds of specialists within the educational system, reading specialists, uh, all kinds of uh, folks that are trying to, teachers and, and staff members that are trying to support our students in all different ways. We also have the, the, la the last two stakeholders, your business and community and post-secondary partners. And developing those is so important. Create a network of supporting career development interventions, feedback and real world opportunities. Involve your chamber of commerce, involve your local clubs and, and th those folks are meeting virtually now. They have not stopped meeting. It's more important than ever to have your advisory council. It's not something to put on the back burner. Um, engagement is reciprocal. Like when you engage with the business and community, they gain visibility to you and you gain visibility visibility to them. And I, I was always amazed, I, you know, I just have to, you know, throw this in. I was always amazed when I went to some of the trainings, I, I was just thinking like, wow, it's so easy to connect. And yet sometimes people were very reluctant to do that because we know you're all pressed for time. And uh, we know like there are students in your office and, and now with the responsibilities virtually, it's, it's another layer but keep your business community and post-secondary partners involved. You know, they are all working through the whole COVID situation the way you are. They have ideas, they have things they can help with. And I think the more you connect with them, the, the um, you know, better it's gonna be for everyone. Uh, going on here, let's talk about sustainability. Again, um, this is available by email request. Um, a couple of things to remember, and I've, I've, I've hit on this in an earlier slide, meet regularly as a counseling team, have an agenda that includes a review of the calendar, the delivery system, all those, you know, the 13 concepts. At every meeting, make edits to reflect current practice. That's even more important now. You know, really be creative about how you get together. You're doing it probably through Zoom now. But it sounds like from what I've you know, heard from some of the counselors that I'm in touch with that they are finding it like very rewarding and stimulating to continue these conversations. You know, ask the hard questions. Don't be afraid to um, put something out there, put an idea out there in terms, because that's, that's what we, we all have to be reaching for right now. And then make certain that everyone understands the power of the local career technical center and career and technical education programs. Again, I'm going to say, think back to those students that career technical centers and career and technical education programs like really make a difference for. Um, engage them early on. We saw that through all the trainings when the elementary and middle school students became more aware of career technical opportunities, they tended to stay more engaged throughout middle school. Um, I, I finished my career um, with four years at a middle school. And it was really interesting because I was right at the point of doing this training and understanding the value of our career technical programs. And it, it just was so fun to go in and talk to the middle school students about that because they were really just, you know, they just really didn't know much about it. Um, you know, we found that students tended to know more about maybe what someone in their family did, maybe not, 
or maybe didn't have any role models at all in terms of work and work experiences. And so this piece is super important. And now we have to figure out how do we do that virtually? How are we? That should be one of the big things on your sustainability check. You know, contact your career technical center counselors, talk to their administrators, find out what they're doing to adjust to the virtual world. That's going to be super important for your students. And then we have a sustainability uh, checklist that you can request from Jeanette Carter. Um, again, you know, refer back to her email. And uh, I think that you will find that it's very helpful, particularly if you have a plan that you've worked on recently. And even if you're just reworking your plan right now, this checklist um, again can be requested from Jeanette. Uh, and I wanna talk a little bit now about the Integrated Learning Conference. And uh, we're hoping to have the, our goal is to have the toolkit ready. Uh, for the Integrated Learning Conference. And, and so that is um, going to be on the November 4th and 5th. Um, there's a register, it's virtual uh, this year. There is a career development strand. Um, a lot of the things we've talked about on this webinar are, are featured in sessions at that conference. So the link is there and you certainly can go on and connect to that. And um, I'm just going to finish up here. I know I'm finished up early and I'm going to like open it up for some some chat. Um, I tried to give a condensed presentation so that you can go back and review the PowerPoint. And uh, here's all of our contact information um, for questions or specific things from from Jeanette. OK, the round the round table. OK, we can do that. Yes. Oh, yeah. I did. Uh, let me just uh, check. Give me about one minute here. And then I, I had something else I wanted to add. I just wanted to ask Alice if we could also, um, you know, get in some things from the chat. Since yeah, we... I'm answering all the questions in the chat. Jeanette and I are in there. Okay. So that's how. Okay. But if they have and... specific questions, they can go ahead and put them in there now. And yep. Respond. And then we'll respond to it. Well, and I did, I, I, I'm not sure if I did earlier when I was, you know, introducing the slide. I just wanted to thank um, Steve Sharp for his, your, your PSCA president for his um, interview with Mike this spring um, that, you know, brought, you know, tears to our eyes because it was so, so um, from the heart and, um, you know, right before Mike's passing. And so, you know, Steve did, you know, I wanted to thank him, you know, personally for that. He did an excellent job um, with that roundtable discussion. And it just meant a lot to all of us that work so closely with Mike. So thank you, Steve. I know you're on the meeting today. Okay, Alice, do you, do you want to throw me a question or perhaps something that came up that you're seeing and I can maybe share it with everybody? Well, one of the questions that we're getting is um, uh, regarding the template and where can they access that. And right now, Jeanette can send them a Word document, but um, we have Matthew on here. I can't, don't know what Matt's last, Shervington. He has it in Google Docs too. So he's going to share that with Jeanette and then she would be able to send uh, share for people who wanted a Google Docs formatted template or a Word. Because if you take our Word and dump it into Google, as many people mentioned on the chat, it gets all crazy with formatting and things get really messed up. Well, and one thing I want to mention that kind of brought it to my mind was that um, we, when we do the toolkit, one of the things that there's going to be some links um, on each concept, all the 13 concepts, so that you can click on the link and see a sample plan from a district that's recently updated. There's, um, we had about five outstanding plans that we were reviewing back from January through March. And, uh, you know, we were able, as we've been working on this toolkit, to um, pull pieces of those out for you to be able to see. And I think that's going to be really helpful because that was one of the questions we got when we were on the road a lot. Like, can you show us an example of this? What's this supposed to look like? How does that? And, and I think you'll see that, uh, you know, there's some real excellent examples out there. 
Another question that we got is that people, if you are currently about to get your um, plan adopted by your board and it's in the old format, now what? Uh, that's not an easy answer. Um, you have to have a plan. So you want to go ahead and get that adopted. But your plan is something you're working on all the time. So as soon as you get adopted, get it adopted, you should start looking at the new formatting and the new requirements. The old plan was written prior to the uh, rubric for evaluating counselors. Uh, it was prior to the Future Ready Index. So a lot of those very important components that exist in it now just weren't there. That's why they weren't included back then because they didn't exist. So you're going to want to move towards that as quickly as possible. But I, you know, I don't want people to be going nuts and saying, oh my gosh, we have to start completely over again. Get the thing adopted, get it um, in, you know, uh, get it sent to your CTC. And then as you're meeting on that regular basis in the district that I worked, we were, we spent a little bit of time at each of our monthly meetings, just reviewing our plan and starting to work on things. Um, one of the very first things you could start to work on is the counselor roles that Kathy talked about, because that's what goes back and is linked to that counselor evaluation. If you use the old format, you didn't, probably bother to do that, but that can simply and easily be done now. People that have been audited and have had their plan in the old format, it has been mentioned to them that it needs to be updated, but I don't think like they chopped anybody's head off or anything. So that's my answer to that question. Uh, well, that's a really good question because I think, you know, you do, if you have a board presentation and, you know, you're on a timeline and you have the old plan, present it. It's certainly, but then as you continue to move forward this year, that's what you need to be, that's what you need to be updating. Um, actually, all the things, if you go back to that timeline and the history, all the things that happened in the last decade really support um, counselors in Pennsylvania. It's just amazing. I uh, watched that out in the field. Um, working with uh, Mike and Betty. I also watched it in my supervision area of, of um, Bloomsburg, which overlapped about five intermediate units in their service area. And I just, I just found that everything that seemed to happen helped to put everything into place. And I think you'll see that too. It all starts to make sense. And so, and sitting down and talking together, there's, there's just been so much change in the field. Like, you know, there always is uh, retirements, administration, counselors changing. And that new person that comes on your team is probably going to be recently trained and, and have a lot of like really helpful information. And you as, uh, you know, if you're a person that's been there 10 years, 20 years, you have that info, you have like such valuable contacts and the base of everything that they need to become an effective counselor, like the role that you're in. And so just that teamwork, that collaboration, and again, that goes back to the ASCA model. That is just, that is the whole heart of the K through 12 plan. And that is the heart of it. Another question, Alice? Uh, another question that uh, showed up on here was uh, what type of steps are people taking um, in updating um, the plan to reflect some of these new initiatives? In the new format, we have, um, we had for the past two years, we had a place where you could, indi you could indicate in your delivery and curriculum which artifacts you were collecting. And we just now added the career ready skills, the social and emotional continuum. So you can start to record those things in your plan also. Those are some of the other things that weren't in the old format plan that are now in the new format plan. Yes, I think that's just reinforcing, Alice, what I was sharing, that the things that have come into place and are now requirements for us are part of what the plan um, initially got us thinking about. Mm -hmm. I uh, know myself, um, you know, very focused uh, 10 years ago on um, a certain style of counseling that I was trained for. 
and that style is still very important today, but this was this added in a layer and I think the layer was tier one, being able to connect with all students. And that's what the gathering of, you know, the, the all the things that, you know, you have that you're getting information from Laura, um, which is, I believe, next week, and then uh, from Pam, uh, Dr. Pam Emery, which was yesterday. I think it all ties together that when you're writing your plan, you'll be able to pull information about those standards and about the, um, you know, the career ready um, things that you're doing, the activities that you're doing that will be worked into your plan. They all support each other and it just makes sense. And it just puts it together. I think the K through 12 plan just puts it together as a, a, a living, working document. Another question, Alice? Another thing, and, and nobody asked it on here, but it's an email that I got yesterday from the district that you and I are gonna be supporting. Right. Starting in November. Um, what if you start to work on this plan and lots of the parts of it are empty? Um, I want to say that when Central Columbia first did their plan, we there were many things within the delivery system that we that were just not there. We covered all we covered all the standards, but may, um, when we started out, maybe we were doing one or two things at each grade level. And over time, that has really evolved, and there are many, many more things there. But when you're first starting out, um, if you want to make it reflect accurately what you're doing, uh, you know, you don't want to put stuff in there that you're not delivering, uh, but don't be frustrated when you look at those sample plans because those folks have some of them are on their all are on their third revision although it even hasn't been in play that long they just opted to update it at more often than five years because of the many changes that they were making so understand that those people have built, been building their castle or their program mm -hmm. for a long, long time. And if you're just really starting out, and particularly if you're in a district where your ratios are high and you don't have a ton of time to get in and deliver things in classrooms and you don't have a lot of your classroom teachers assisting with that, it's gonna look pretty sparse when you start. But your goal then each year is to find another place or way that you can get in and deliver the standards. Um, so that's that's a common, common question that we get from folks. Um, you know, my plan doesn't, it just doesn't have all the need in it that these samples that are giving us, they're giving us, and they, they won't at first. Well, and the thing that I can add here that I saw as I traveled with the trainings is that so many counselors felt it was totally on their shoulders. And that's why we included the two slides with the stakeholders, because it takes a team. And, and so as you begin to work with your, your teachers and your parents and, your, and bring them into the, the whole process, and you will find that it's not, it shouldn't all just be on you. As a matter of fact, out in my supervision, I talked to someone that had gone through an audit and that was one of the things that they commented to her was like, it's, it's, it's delivered strictly by the counselors at your level. Like who else can you involve? It needs to be other people as well. Like you can spearhead it and you can be the counselor leader that ASK has trained you to be, but then you need to engage the other stakeholders to bring them into the loop because that's how it gets reinforced. If you just think basically of like an elementary classroom, like, and if you're going in for some classroom, you know, school counselor involvement, like who's gonna carry that on when you leave after a half an hour, 45 minutes? Um, I've seen more and more high school counselors like pushing into classes and then letting a business ed teacher or a computer or, you know, someone in one of the special family consumer science teacher really expand. I've worked with a lot of those um, instructors over the years and it's just been very meaningful. And I think one of the biggest challenges for counselors is like in our training, we thought we had to do it all. We, we just like, we, we, we thought it, it, it's, you know, and it is counselor driven. But again, that concept of counselor leader is so important and engaging the stakeholders. So 
you know, going back to Alice's, um, the question that she had in an email, it's, it's like when there are those empty pieces, don't look at like you're the only person that can do that. Reach out and find who, who can help you, who can assist you, who can be one of those stakeholders. So Kathy, now Amelia is going to provide some of the questions that showed up in the Q&A section. Great. Okay. Go ahead, Amelia. Okay. So um, the first question was, is the Future Ready Planning Portal still on target to open in October? And that would be something um, future ready, I think for one of the, like your presentation next week, that would be a good question. I think you said you have something scheduled next week, Amelia with Laura. Yes, absolutely. So next Tuesday at 8.30 in the morning is another school counselor symposium um, that Laura Federici will be the presenter she will cover the future ready planning portal as well as the industry based indicators mm -hmm. that some people have all also asked about. Um, that, that webinar will be recorded just like this one is. So if you are not able to attend, it will be available on our website. And I just wanna mention very quickly because this was just brought up, um, the current link to register for that webinar next week is broken and I did just receive the new link for it and we will get that posted for you by the end of today so that if you want to attend that one next week, um, you can get on to our website and register for it. Um, another question that we had, I think we covered where the templates can be found, um, but we had someone ask if they're using the ASCA templates is that sufficient for the K-12 guidance plan? Alice, do you want to take that I one? I can take that question. So the ASCA format um, is, is definitely a broader format. And if it, my experience has been, I've worked with one district that had done that. And there were some things that were not, that did not show up in the rubric. So if you're using that ASCA, model, what you need to do is take the rubric for the plan, and Jeanette can also provide that for you if you don't have it. It's the rubric that the auditor could use to review your plan when they came out. I've not encountered anybody that that's happened to yet, because I think that we're early in evaluating the new plans, but I think that will probably happen eventually, so it's something we have to be ready for. Uh, but take that rubric and, and whoever would be fielding in the audit would need to be familiar enough with the rubric to say, yes, this is where you find it in our plan. Um, every plan doesn't end up looking exactly like our template. Our districts have become very creative in doing some things. And in some cases, we've adopted that and made that part of our template. But um, the real key is that you have to be able to take that rubric and just like you, if you were grading a kid's paper, you're going to use that rubric to make sure that whatever format you've used, you can answer all the questions to the rubric. Well, and, and Amelia, I know when we were exchanging emails earlier this summer, you were talking about a crosswalk that was done with... Um, you know, the K through 12 plan and some things that the Counselors Association was doing. Is that available to, to members? Well, it's funny that you say that. It, it will be. We're going to be rolling it out at our conference coming up in December, which I can just announce right now since we're talking about it. Um, it is going to be virtual this year. Conference is December 3rd and 4th. And registration for conference will open on October 5th. So all of that information will be on our website, paschoolcounselor.org, starting October 5th. Um, so that is one of the things that we plan to roll out. What PSCA did was we developed a crosswalk document between the K-12 guidance plan, and we used the updated template, um, to the ramp application and we use the fourth edition of the ASCA model we updated from the third. So what that is for is to encourage more ramp applications from Pennsylvania. 
So be looking for that document if you are interested at some point in applying for RAMP. Um, we tried to make it easier for you by saying, here's the sections of the K-12 guidance plan that you can just pull out and drop into the RAMP application. So thank you for mentioning that, Kathy. Well, and that's exciting to me because as I moved through this process in the last decade, like the thing that was most exciting to me was how the K through 12 plan really was ASCA based. And, and so when you told me, you know, this summer that that was being worked on, I thought this is wonderful for counselors because as a counselor educator for the past, you know, six, seven years, I um, really was heavily involved into training students in the model and, and using all, you know, the, the, the textbooks and things that were, you know, based on, um, you know, presenters that I heard years ago at Duquesne. And, and so I, it just all comes together then. And I, I, I'm just thrilled that the, you know, um, association is, you know, focusing on that at the conference this year, because I think like this year, it's going to be easier than ever to get to the conference without the traveling, without the, you know, without having to, you know, it's just going to be, I think we much less expensive. Much less expensive. Mm -hmm. I think a huge turnout um, mm -hmm. for, for the PSCA conference and, and, you know, for the ILC as well, that people will have the opportunity to, to attend when maybe they couldn't get out of their building before it was hard. And, and lots of, you know, rules and restrictions by districts about like money and all kinds of things that impact attending. So I'm just gonna advocate up there for you all to get and sign up for that conference. I probably attended, to, you know, 10 years in a row when I met Amelia years ago. <laughs> yeah. and I, it, it really was, and, and spread it to your call, you know, spread that to your colleagues too, because, um, you know, I, I was always known as the person that got out there and went to those things and learned, and that's how I stayed so involved in the field, um, even as a retired counselor. And so, you know, when you're meeting with your teams, that's got to be on your agenda like getting the up-to-date information, because I think this year is probably going to be one of the, you know, highlights in terms of new materials and concepts at, at, at the PSCA conference and at the Integrated Learning Conference. So that crosswalk is just a small example of something that can really, and what that does is directly benefit your students. When you Absolutely. start to write that plan, it's not about you or your training or it's really about the students. It's really, it really goes right back to home. And that tier one, that was, that was like a light bulb moment to me um, because I wasn't trained in tier one. And I heard that a lot around the state. Like I, I wasn't trained to, you know, be in a classroom or I wasn't trained to work with large groups of students. And many of us, you know, I was trained, you know, back in the seventies and eighties at, at Bucknell and, and we weren't trained that way, but that's what has really made a difference in terms of how I ended up my career. And I feel like the good mix of everything um, in, in terms of the tier one, the tier two and the tier three, I think it, it's just exactly what is needed in, in order to be able to reach everybody. And, and, and with the, some of the opportunities at the conferences, I think you're just gonna be really you know, delighted with what you learn. Well, thank you for that advertisement. I'm very happy that you said that for us. Um, so yeah, we are getting close to the time to wrap up for today. Um, so I wanted to thank everyone. I know there are still a lot of questions out there. Um, you can see everyone's email there that you can reach out to and um, email them if you have any more questions regarding the K-12 guidance plan specifically. Um, I also wanted to just let you guys know, we did a lot of talk about um, next week's webinar on October 6th. If you try to go to our website to register for it, the link is broken right now, um, but I, did, I do have a new link. We just have to get it posted on the website. So please be checking back within the next couple days until we can get that posted. Um, and Amelia, I um, I want to thank you because I think um, the collaboration between the consulting that we're doing and PSCA, I think, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to have some in the toolkit rolling out and, and now that, you know, some contact information is available to your members. I think it's, I think it's a great collaboration and I, I, I just want to thank you for that. 
Uh, well, thank you, Kathy. And I, I also, I want to let people know that PSCA is, you know, we're looking to establish more collaborations with groups like yours. And I want to encourage people, uh, when you go to our website, uh, if you are not a member of PSCA, consider joining. Um, I, we are going to be offering more things um, that are relevant to you as school counselors that um, I hope that you will want to partake in. And some of these things may be for members only in the future. So please consider joining PSCA. When you go to our website, P paschoolcounselor.org, um, you'll be able to just click on join now. Um, and, you know, again, I want to thank all of our panelists for being here today. I know we can only see Kathy and Alice for a little bit, but we certainly had Betty and Jeanette in the background. So I want to thank all of you again for being here. And I look forward to collaborating with you all more in the future. So thank you again. Thank you, Amelia. And Thanks for having us. Absolutely. I'm and gonna say goodbye. <laughs> I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody today. Um, stay in touch, Field. We're here to support, you know, we're support you in any way. Thank you. All right, thank you.